<clears throat> Thanks everyone for stopping by. Welcome to today's webinar. Build a duplicate du duplicatable 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 <laughs> duplicatable. I'm bad with the, the syllables. I'm sorry. And scan scalable business with five foundational system playbooks hosted by Maps Coach Monica Reynolds. Before I kick it over to her, I have three quick announcements. Please note this meeting is being recorded. I will share the chat in the moment. Share the link in the chat momentarily to the MAPS YouTube channel where the recording will be will be available within 24 hours. Currently, everyone is on mute. However, we do value group participation. So we ask if you have any questions for Monica, please type them into the chat box. Following the meeting, if you have any questions about today's call or any other coaching programs from MAPS, please email us at FastTrack, that's F-A-S-T-T-R-A-C-K at KW.com. And that's all for you, Monica. The floor is yours. Thank you so much, Graham. Hey, everyone. I'm Monica Reynolds. I'm an executive MAPS coach, and I look forward to talking to everyone today. And, you know, one of the things I've been in real estate about 44 plus years now, I hate to even keep counting. And I think the one thing that I was thinking about on this entire um, conversation and training today was that, you know, real estate's easy. And there's two things it's about. And if you learn anything today, it's about the numbers, 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 numbers. Okay. And number two, it's about the systems. So when you understand the numbers in real estate's a math equation and you understand what it takes to get a listing appointment, how many people you have to talk to, how many appointments to, you know, a listing, how many listings do you take, what's your conversion rate, et cetera, for a contract. And once you understand the systems, now the systems build so that you can do the numbers efficiently, but also do the numbers and have those clients that you are looking for. So I want you to think about what I just said. You're gonna build a duplicatable and scalable business. And I'm only gonna share five systems with you today because I don't have time to go through with our, you know, we can do this for three days and I'll go through 21 systems, but I'm gonna give you the foundational ones. And that's what I promise to do. So Stephanie on the call here has been with me for 13 years. Would you go to the first slide on playbook number one? Playbook number one is about communication. In playbook number one, I'm going to share with you a communication log, a Friday report, what the meetings look like. Now, in this communication log, also, it is about talking to the clients, obviously. And so getting really, really clear, it's about client communication also. So Stephanie, let's go to the next slide. So what's a Friday report? So as you build your team, you have to have communication from your, with your team. So every single Friday, my team would fill out five things I accomplished to move the business forward. Week high, week low, and what did you do to wow a customer? Now, there's a lot of assistants in the world who will say, gosh, you know, I know I did something. I don't know. I was so busy all week. And some agents will might say, gosh, I know they're busy, but I don't know what was accomplished. This is one of those things where you tie the week up with a bow and everybody feels good. So take a look at that report. And obviously this is recorded and you'll get a copy of that. We'll share that coming up. So the communication log is how often your clients are. Yes, you can get, you will see this PDF in the recording. We can't send that to you, but you'll see it in the recording. So one of the things on the communication log is that this is your communication directly to the sellers, the buyers that you are working with, whether they're under contract or not, or they're, they've listed. So the most important thing right now in the shift is relationships. And a lot of us, what we're used to the other market, list a house, two days later, it's under contract, boom, it's gone, or two hours later. No, now it's about the relationships and it's about communications. Those clients are assessing every single time did I do the right thing? I just gave them 6% off the top of my listing or off the top of my equity, my value of my home, that 6% of that value was just given to you. Now, some of you will go, well, I only get the 3% or I only get two and a half, whatever. doesn't matter. They signed that contract. So if it's $300,000, every time you're assistant or you talk to them, is there a communication that worth $18,000 if it's a $300,000 house? And so you need those systems in place. So the first system is communication. Next slide, Stephanie. So now if you have a team, you need to keep that team intact as far as what's going on with your every day. 
So there's weekly team meetings, you know, should no more be more than 30 minutes. It's a numbers update. It's about the goals and the gaps. It's announcements. Attendance is mandatory or strongly suggested. You can't say mandatory to a, to a independent contractor buyer agent. Make it valuable each time. It's fast. It's fast paced. It's not a complaint session. Now, with that, you can always add another 30 minute segment for training if you like. You have daily communication with your team. And so daily communication is you may have a huddle with your assistant every day at fifth for 15 minutes. Why? That person is your secret weapon. That person is going to take you to the next level. And you need that communication, that level of trust and communication. So even if you said to your assistant, what are the three things you're working on today? What are your three big rocks? What questions do you have for me? Having that connection. Monthly team meetings. Now, no one brings a cell phone in. No one brings a computer in. They have notebooks. They're taking notes. And that way I know that they're paying attention. And everyone's given a book to read. You know, lunch is potluck, donated, whatever it happens to me. And it's the current monthly numbers up to date and what we're going to do next month. And so when you look at that and you have a team or you're building a team, you have to have a strong communication uh, system. And when you lose agents on your team or, or an assistant on your team, there's two reasons. It's like a divorce, communication and money. So we're always making sure that we have the communication nailed down. You should be looking at a year-end business planning right now. And so the year-end business planning is the assistants have a business plan. You have a business plan. So some of you think, well, what will the assistant do? They should be bringing in a referral once a month. They should be bringing in a referral from their friends, family, and past coworkers once a quarter. They should be bringing in a review at least five every single month. And so is that in place? So that's part of their business plan. And so when you look at this kind of communication, what is your systems for communication right now? On a scale of one to 10, no judgment, throw it in the chat box. How would you rate your communication systems with your team and with your clients? Clients right now should be called every day, every single day. Why? Because it's a relationship business and their house is not selling in two days. Okay, put it in the chat box. Scale one to 10, seven getting better, eight. Okay, good. Okay, eight. So six and five. All right, you eights out there. Remember, it's about the seller never calling your office and saying, hey, what happened on this? What happened on that? It's the seller. It's the person in pending. So it's not calling your office and saying, can you give me an update? You have the proactive calls going out there. So Andre Brunson, three, I, I, I trust and I believe that you really feel that. And some of you at seven and eight, I would say, let's really look at that. Is your phone ringing off the hook? Somebody calling you about a question? Then you really want to take a look at that. Are you keeping your team members informed about the business and where the gaps are and what's going on? Great. So some of you feel confident about the eight. Well, you still got two more points to go to. Let's go to playbook number two. So communication is the first playbook. Get it organized as to who you're talking to, your clients, your, your agents on your team, your assistants. What are the things that you're doing? Okay, now let's take a look at this one. Pre, this is a listing system. Do you have a pre-list package? Command has one there for you. Do you have a bulletproof checklist? Now, I always say listings are absolutely bulletproof. Bulletproof, bulletproof. If you occasionally list a property with a septic system, you put it in the checklist, assistant crosses off if it's not a, a property with a septic system. You have to, if it's HOA, you've got all the HOA checkoffs for, for making sure you get the documents, et cetera. Pass the baton. I'm going to show you that coming up. The showing form, show you that coming up. Price improvements and handling all incoming calls. Do you have a playbook for each one of those systems so that that person, during that listing process, which is the beginning of your relationship forever as their agent, are you absolutely confident that your listing systems are perfect? Do you have a just listed letter going out to the neighborhood? Do you have a thank you for listing with me letter? Are you asking them for referrals during this process? What's your system for getting a review during this process? And so every single day, 
they need to be communicated with. They just agreed to pay 6% of the value of their home. Off comes out of their equity right to you. Are you giving them, if it's 300,000, that $18,000 service? So I really want you to shift your mindset. And in all my trainings, I really help people understand that. Okay, so on playbook number two, the next one is pass the baton. So I have a very large checklist on pass the baton. And let's go to that one, Stephanie, next. And so it's one pager, not that large. It's a one pager, but it's where you take the time as an agent to tell them the motivation. Do they have kids? Do they have pets? Oh, they don't have kids, but they have a dog. It's their son. He's a 250-pound Rottweiler. And he's absolutely the, you know, the apple of their eye. He has his own t dog TV going all day. He has his own bedroom. He has his own couch in the family room. What, what is all of that, you know? And so I want you to really think about, do you do a great job of saying they're happy they're moving, they're sad they're moving? You know, do you go through that with your assistant who makes that call to them? Does everybody understand that? So I really want you to think through this really, really well. So Pat, you give them the motivation. This, this, slip, this form takes two minutes and 20 seconds. And so if the audio is fading in and out, gosh, am I fading in and out, Stephanie? It's, it's barely getting a little softer at times. I can hear you fine. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. I'll move my mic closer. Now you guys can see my mic. Okay. So That's motivation, better. kids, pets, listing price, you know, and, and con confirming the listing price, anything, personality styles, but more importantly, are they happy or sad they're moving? Kids or pets, what's the extenuating circumstances? Anything I need to know about the house. They have a baby. They don't want showings until noon. Take the time to give your assistant, if you have one, that information. The, everyone is individual and they all have MMFI on their forehead. Make me feel important. Okay, assistant's first call checklist. If you have an assistant, the first time they call them is within one hour of getting that listing. Now, if you're taking a listing at five o'clock, seven o'clock, they're not going to get it, right? They're not going to, the day's over. So you say to them, my assistant will call you before noon tomorrow. And obviously, if you're taking a listing, you don't have an assistant, you are the assistant right now, as they say, then you process as quickly as possible that morning. You start talking to them about what's going to happen next. I've ordered the sign. This is when it's coming, et cetera. Now, so when you're thinking about this, what are the listing playbook systems you have? Do you have a great checklist? Do you have a pre-list package? Do you have pre-qualifying questions that you're filling out? Do you have a showing form? You know, if you have an assistant, do you have a call checklist that she or he's using? Do you have their business card going out in the pre-list package? What is your listing playbook look like? If I'm going to come buy your business tomorrow, are you ready for me? If I buy it, if I'm going to buy your your listing systems on Monday. Are you ready right. for me? So let's look at the next one, the feedback questions. Okay, so if you're using Zillow, who owns showing time or whatever that showing desk, whatever that is, stop doing that. They're getting your information. They are a real estate company. You wouldn't let Remax own something that you are using. So stop doing that. The very best thing that you can do as a Keller Williams agent in a team is to call that agent, the assistant does, or you do, if you don't have an assistant, and you say, hey, good morning. Thanks for showing my property on Cherry Street yesterday at four o'clock. I wanted to just take one minute of your time. I have three quick questions for you. Would you mind, may I ask you, is your buyer going to write an offer? No, they're not. They say, great, okay, I appreciate that. What would it take for your buyer to write an offer? They're not interested in writing an offer because it's too close to the freeway. They're moving away from the freeway. Okay, there's nothing I can do with that. However, myself or my assistant, if they heard, well, they love everything about the house is perfect, perfect, perfect. The living room and the, uh, excuse me, the family room and the kitchen are not connected. There's a wall in between. If the wall was gone, they'd love it. So my assistant, true story, Stephanie, on this call said, I think we can fix that possibly. Let me make some calls. We'll get back to you. So we figured out a contractor could come in, make a pony wall out of it, 2000 bucks. The guy bought the house. The seller paid the 2000 bucks, and we were down the road. 
So you have to listen to those questions. Was your buyer writing an offer? What would it take for your buyer to write an offer? And the third question is, what do you feel this property will sell for? Now, I feel I've filled out a million online surveys like you guys have, and I never say anything too rough because I know it's going to get right over to the seller. And yet in a conversation, I might say, oh, by the way, the house smells like the tax box. And so we, my assistants are trained and I do the training where they say, may I give you some really um, tough feedback and I know we can help you fix this. They said blank, blank. And here's some of the solutions we have for you. Okay, so there you have that form. So let's go to playbook number three. So now I'm coming to your office to buy your communications playbook. I'm coming to your office to buy your listing playbook. What about your closing systems? Now, what I said to you before, and I've been doing this job a long time, I coach more agents than anyone in the country. I built all the assisted programs. I wrote book in the 90s. Some of the stuff that I wrote in the 90s and the books that were published still on Amazon, don't buy them. My systems now are much better than those books. They, they're out of date, but people still buy them. Gary Keller used some of that for the MREA book. Imagine that. So playbook number three, this is where you have a client for life. Now, you can do a great job selling the listing, and it can go, you know, $50,000 over ask price. You took photos three times. You do over-the-top customer service, and you helped them with this. You helped them with that. I mean, you, you couldn't have done a better job. It's all Ritz-Carlton all the way. And yet, when it comes to the closing, this is where you retain the client for life. So do you have a bulletproof checklist? So that if I'm your new assistant and I'm coming in and I can follow one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, et cetera, can I do that successfully and win for the client? Do you have a pass the baton? So if you have a team from a listing manager to a TC, or if you have an outside TC, are you passing the baton to that TC, letting them know, hey, the husband just died, or they're really sick, or they lost their job, and they're moving to... Are they moving to help their mother who has Alzheimer's in Texas and it's really a sad situation? What's, what's going on to make that client feel important rather than just a file? Just a file. Setting expectations. So for example, I've built lots and lots and we don't use the word scripts too much anymore. It's called conversation so we can stay out of the TCPA rec, uh, problem, telecommunications, uh, or uh, tele Telephone Consumer Protection Act. And you've got to be careful with that. But we're going to set expectations with them with the scripts. So here's my, what might happen during a home inspection. Here's what might happen during an appraisal. Here's what might happen during the lender. You're setting the expectations so that there's no surprises. There's always going to be a surprise. Say, you know, I want to share with you, you know, we said that the lender appraiser may not come in at appraisal value. And that has happened. And I know we talked about what your options are. You can accept the offer at a lower price. You can negotiate with the buyer in the middle somewhere. The bar, you can say no and the buyer comes up with the cash or you can just say, I'm out. So you have four options there. So are you trained, is your assistant trained to really know how to set the expectations so that that is a customer for life? And during that transaction, you will get a referral and you will get a review if you follow this extraordinary systems of having the playbooks in place where no one fails, all right? And then again, some of you are gonna get frightened, call every day, can't do that. Well, it's amazing how assistants will balk at that and agents will balk at that. You know, it can be a text, it can be an email, it's a contact and it will stop the phone from ringing because they trust you and two, they know they will hear from you. I just talked to an agent today and they found out that several of their listings haven't been spoken to in three weeks and they're getting ready to expire. And I said, well, chalk that up. Why would they list with you again? You know, you guys really blew it on that. He goes, yeah, I got lost in the cracks. And I said, well, the only way to save something like that is to go over there with your hat in your hand and personally visit them, talk about a price improvement. And first of all, beg for forgiveness and say what's going to happen moving forward and then get them on a price improvement. I said, good luck. Because they, they, the relationship is already down, down the road. So reviews and referrals are critical during each transaction. So on a scale of one to 10, do you get a review or a referral 
on every single transaction you have. So I'll just say either or. Yes or no in the box. Are you on a scale of one to 10 rather? Where are you? Do you get a review or re referral from every transaction? Okay, yes. Okay, good for Renita. Seven, okay, six. Okay, eight. What would it take for you to, I, I appreciate the honesty. I love that. Great at reviews every time, lousy at referrals. Okay, so that's part of the closing playbook is to have those conversations and having your assistant say, by the way, we appreciate your business so much. Can I ask you a favor? Our business is based on referrals from great people like you. Who do you know right now that we could help by or sell? And then they change it up. And next week they say, gosh, you know, I got to ask you another question. Had you run into anybody thinking about buying or selling? You know, really appreciate your help. We'd love someone just like you, another client. So however they do it, however you role play it, that's part of the playbook of closing systems is to get a review and a referral each time. You have to have great tracking with deadlines. We had whiteboards in our office. We had walls painted with whiteboard paint. We tracked every single thing. Yes, we were paperless and yes, we had files. You know, buyer seller update. Law kept. If you're an agent, you do not want to be in the files if you have an assistant, but where can you quickly see the, okay? Let's go to playbook number four. Oh, well, no, first we're going to talk about pass the baton on this one. Sorry, I thought, thought we were going to four, but we're not. Let's go to the next page, Stephanie. Take time to ensure a smooth transition for your sellers from the listing office to the closing office. Set aside five minutes to call sellers together with your transaction manager. So if you have a TC and you just got your seller under contract, you have a listing manager, they would have the conversation. If you're the agent and you've got a TC, the very best way for you to say to the seller who went under contract or the buyer who went under contract is to say, I'd love for you to meet the transaction coordinator. They're professionally trained to handle the closing. Their job is to handle every single thing regarding the closing. They will be in touch with you often. You notice I didn't say daily. They will be in touch with you often. So these are the conversations you have. And so you get them on the phone, you get your TC on the phone a lot of time. I love to put them on a Zoom call. Hey, everyone, glad we could all get on the call and meet. I'm so excited. Um, Stephanie, I wanted to introduce you to Jane and Jim. They just bought, uh, they just sold their home on Cherry Street. They're moving out of area to Oregon to their new retirement home. They're so excited and, you know, I wanted you to meet them so that we can have a really smooth transaction with them and get their home closed. And then, so Stephanie goes, great, nice to meet you. Can you guys, uh, can we meet at two o'clock today? I'll call you again and we'll go through everything. Or maybe Stephanie at that time is prepared to go over what the next steps are, what they can expect. It's about the communication, okay? Next, next slide, Stephanie. Setting expectations for closings. Like I said to you, request for repairs. You have to do a good job of setting requests for repairs or your assistant does. You know, the inspector is trained to find something, even a brand new home, they're gonna find a list of things that need to be fixed, right? And then I train in my training calls <clears throat> in putting these playbooks together. There are, there are three things you say to a seller that we're looking, we need to be most aware about. Any kind of health hazard, like a mold issue, any kind of structural hazard, right? And any kind of safety hazard. So health, safety, and structure. Now, safety hazard means electrical panels, not up to code or something like that, right? Structural foundation has a crack. Those are the most important things that we're looking at. And obviously, they're going to find something, a crooked light switch or a light socket that doesn't work or something isn't correct here or there. Um, I've even, you know, had inspectors find dirt in an electrical box, whatever, right? So just be prepared. There'll be a list of things. So you have to have those conversations. And the buyers, you have to set the expectation. There will be some things and we have to be really aware of what are the most important things to be concerned about. Okay. Conversations and role playing, right? But what does your playbook look like for closing? So let's go to playbook number four. And I appreciate you guys being on the call and I'm watching the time here. All right. So playbook number four is this. 
It's database and tracking numbers. Now, really, database is one playbook and tracking numbers is another. And yet, when you learn about the database as your only asset, and it's about the completes, name, address, phone number, and emails. So for fun, if you want to interact, I'd love that. How many in your database are completes? Name, address, phone number, and email. I'm coming to buy your database next week. How many do you have? And it's okay if you put a question mark in there, you don't know. Remember, I'm not interested in name and phone number. I'm not interested in name and email. I want name, address, phone number, and email. How many do you have in your database? Put it in the chat. 20%, okay? That's not good. 68% better. Okay, you guys got some work to do. I'm coming to buy you. 87, okay, that's good. That's good. All right, and Gary says you need 5,000 people in there. Friends, family, past coworkers, acquaintances. So, you know, really thinking about that. What are the systems to build that database? What's your playbook for building that database? And so when you think about the future in the playbooks, that database is really critical number one. Now, when it comes to tracking numbers, what are your systems? Do you have whiteboards? Do you have a Google Doc? Where are you putting, you know, keeping track of how many appointments you went on to take a listing? What's your listing inventory conversion rate? 58% from Chris. Okay, so now you've got something to really think about because you can't sell it at that. It's not worth as much as you think it might be. All right, be worth a lot more, 100%, and then keep growing your business, right? Okay, success is in the map, right? So tracking numbers, team accountability, where are you keeping all that? In my office, and I share all these systems, we had all these whiteboards, we had these Google Docs and how we're doing it. So there was like not accountability, it was severe accountability and it's daily accountability. So what's your playbook on tracking numbers? Numbers, numbers, numbers. I watched an amazing, um, Gary had a CEO mastermind. And there was a speaker there that said, watch this on Netflix called Black Godfather. And this guy was in the entertainment business. And then, I mean, we're talking about networking and things that he would do. It's a two hour movie. It's a little long, but there was a lot of things he said. It's all about the numbers. It's all about the numbers. And then he approached Hank Aaron, who made some pretty good money. You know, he, he, bet, he, built, he beat Babe Ruth's record. And he made more money after he retired with this gentleman, um, Clarence a Aben. And he made more money with him afterwards because it was about the numbers. He was, he, he beat, he beat uh, Babe Ruth's record and then he taught him how to make money with that notoriety. And then of course, Hank Aaron gave everything back uh, to his community, which was cool. So, and what, what, what all that means, it's about the numbers and you got to track the numbers and you really have to understand sources of business and how many contacts you make today to, to find a lead, how many contacts from leads to appointments, how many appointments does it take to take a listing, how many showings does it take to convert a buyer? I mean, get to know your numbers. Math is so simple for real estate. There's not a lot you need to track. There's not 50 numbers. There's just about six or seven. Tracking numbers is critical. That's a playbook. Okay. All right. So if you go to the next slide, tracking the growth of your database. Per Gary Keller, you want to have a minimum of three per day that you're adding to your database. Be aware. Be conscious. What's your system for that? You know, name, address, phone number, and emails are complete. Structure and organize your database by agent team, vendor, sphere of influence, and past clients. That's your referral network. So when I say looking at that, you want to know how many referrals did you get this year from agents? What's that percentage? You have a team, how many? From your vendors. How many referrals are you getting from your vendors? If none, what do you got? Well, you're at ground level. The only way is up now. So that's the good news. What's your system for that? So all of these are part of the database playbook, okay? And then the sphere of influence, past clients. So if you get a referral, when somebody says, I said, what's the referral of your business? 35%. I said, well, that's good. Break it down for me. Huh? Break it down. Huh? Break it down. How many from agents? Well, I don't know. How many from your team? I don't know. How many from past clients? Not very many. 
Well, let's look at that. So I want you to, if you hear anything today, you're going to break down your referrals and to think about it at this time of year is critical because you're moving into building a business plan. So what percent of your business comes from your database? What should it be? The magic number is 35%. 35% should come from your database. That's the magic number. Now, some of you will say, well, I'm at 80%. I'm at 90%. Amazing. But where's your new business? At some point, that's going to get to be old. So where's the new business coming in? All right. Next page, please, Stephanie. What are the five sources of business? And so you're looking at past clients, center of influence, expired, FISBO, probate, referrals, non-owner, occupied, open houses, social media. That's just a few. Where are the sources of your business? Where are the sources of your business? Where are you not paying attention that you should? Are you getting the past client referrals you should? If you're doing open houses, for every two open houses, you should have one contract. If you do it correctly, if you do it the seven level way, past client 7%, 70%, Karen, that's awesome. And my concern is you need to keep adding more people to your database every day and keep looking for new business. Okay, all right, playbook number five. We're gonna talk about customer experience. Building a customer for life playbook. What are the things that you do for client appreciation parties? What is your marketing plan for customer life? Do you send out one video? What are your suggestions for video? In the classes I teach, we go through all of this. We give you a list of all the videos, we give you a list of all the client appreciation parties, what to do six months out, four months out, three months out, two months out, one month out, one week out, two weeks out, et cetera. You have to have those playbooks in place. The, the most important thing that I think you can really hear from me on the customer experience is what are you doing to a raving fan? What are you doing to stay in touch with them? Are you, you calling them four times a, month, a year, once a quarter? Are you using the best affiliates? Do your affiliates say when they're, when they're using affiliate, by the way, you're working with the best team, Monica Reynolds. My lender said that all the time to clients, my title person, the home warranty person, the home inspector person when he went in, by the way, you're working with the best person possible. Don't forget to thank them on a daily basis whenever you're talking to them. By the way, thank you for working with me. Really appreciate the business team says, thanks for working with our team. We so appreciate working with you. Is there anything else I can do to help your day? So is your team scripted? Do you have a customer experience, a customer for life playbook that absolutely says that is your client for life? These are the four client appreciation parties we do. These are the four calls I make to them. We send out a Christmas card. We send out a Thanksgiving card. We have a playbook for the events we do. We have a playbook for our social media. We do, you know, one uh, video per month that's of value. We send out two emails per month. What's your 72 touch? It's not a 36 touch anymore. What's your 72 touch? What's your playbook? So I don't want to make you guys feel bad because I know you have a lot of things started. And yet I wanted you to think about what are some of the things that we should do? So let's go to the next slide which is gonna give you your customer for life some, some events. I heard one today that just was hilarious and I'm gonna share that with you. So on this one, pie giveaways, family pet portraits, charitable event, movie night, fall festival, et cetera. So one of the things on events that, that you can add, um, which we always did was a um, shredding party. So it was always, we had a shredding truck on Fridays it would come out to the, um, parking lot on a Saturday. We had vendors who had popcorn and ice cream, et cetera, like that. And they'd bring their box of documents that need to be shredded. One I heard today that was pretty cool. There in Austin, you can hire, um, it's called TIFF's cookies, T-I-F-F -F cookies. And they have a truck and they can take that truck and give out cookies to a neighborhood, like put it in the middle of the street, shut your street down. And then they, this gal has a pet contest bring your dog or your cat, you know, in their costume. And she does it right before Halloween. So it's a Halloween for pets, which is so cute. So there's a fun thing. So if, they, if that's not you, I mean, I, I've never would probably do something like that because that's, but I just thought that was hilarious. I'd like to go to that. Um, but charitable events, movie nights, whatever it happens to me. I had a gal that 
made a mistake this year and rented the movie Jurassic Park. And kids left there screaming. And the movie was like only $250 for an early morning, like nine o'clock movie viewing. And, and, and everybody, the little kids left screaming out of there. So she said, that was the wrong movie for kids, you know? So you have to kind of think through that. Okay, let's go to the promise script. So this is the promise script and basically the next slide, Stephanie. What you wanna hear about the promise script is, is basically this, is that what you're saying to a client at the, at the end of a listing, they've signed it. And you say, my goal is to give you on a scale of one to 10, a 10 plus experience. We know it's real estate, we know it's people. You know, things can happen. We are going to over communicate with you and keep you in touch. And we want this to be a great experience. I will check in with you time to time to make sure we are delivering a 10 plus. My team will ask you from time to time that we're delivering you a 10 plus. And if we are not delivering a team plus, we're going to make that correction immediately. My only other question for you is during this time, if we deliver this, may I ask you during our time together, would you find one person? who's thinking about buying or selling real estate or has a question, they might even need to, you know, refinance their home. We would love to just help anyone, you know, regarding anything in real estate. May we ask you to do that? And of course they say yes. Of course they say yes, right? Okay. All right. Uh, next slide, Stephanie. Okay. So I mentioned this script before, as you know, I've got a pretty internalized. Thank you for working with our team. We so appreciate your business. Stephanie, next slide. Thank you. May I ask you a favor of business based on referrals from great people like you, who you know right now is thinking about buying or selling. Like I said, I got that one down. Any part of the, the process, here's where people make a mistake. Well, we're not going to ask for referrals to the end. We don't ask for a review for the end. No. When they see something nice, I tell all the assistants on the call and all the agents on the call, when you hear something nice, they go, oh, it's so great how you do this. It's so great how you, you called us on this. So thank you for doing that. Gosh, thank you for recognizing that. May I ask you a favor? Now their house isn't sold. The deal's not done yet. Could If I sent you a link, would you mind giving us a five-star review and mentioning our team name? So you strike when they say something nice. You don't wait till the end. All right, next slide. Okay, so today we've covered a lot. One of the things we covered, so you know, and I put down what I thought were the most important. Obviously, the first playbook you should be concerned about is your communication playbook. The second one is the listing systems. The third one is pending. The fourth one was database and tracking numbers. Those are really two. And then the last one, of course, we talked about the customer experience, customer for life. Now, I want you to really think about this. This is not a hard business, but systems help build your business to be duplicatable and scalable. Whether you're doing 10 deals, 15 deals, or are you doing 500 deals or 500,000 deals? No one's doing that, but people are doing several thousand. There's some agents doing two, 3,000 uh, deals with their big teams. It doesn't matter. You need the systems that are scalable. So these systems are great for anyone in any place where you're at. And so I want you to think about making this investment. You know, you create the systems that are duplicatable and scalable. And I gave you just a few tidbits of some of these. And of course, real deep in the training that I do. And I'm going to answer some questions here in a minute. So if you choose to join this class, this class, the first class every month for one hour is for agents teaching you to be a great boss and a great leader. It is so expensive to hire the wrong person. It's so expensive to not understand what I'm teaching the assistants to do so you can help them be accountable because they'll get busy with their stuff. And when you hear something that I say I'm going to share, you go, that's something we're going to do. That's something we're going to do. So and make the investment and think about this. If you put these playbooks into place, this is how you also build your business. It's not only duplicatable and scalable to, to increase business, but also and also it will allow you to in the future think about who you're going to attract as a business partner, who you're going to attract as a merger, who you're going to attract to sell it. So these, this is why that's important also. So today we covered those five. And then the other, in the, in the classes that I teach, and we're going to cover playbooks on hiring, lead generation, social media, goal setting, numbers tracking, and get real deep into that, building a life by design, 
and in, in a succession plan. What a succession plan, absolutely. In lead generation, I cover probates and out of area owners. Those are two areas that I excelled in as far as lead generation. And I pretty much hand you a playbook on that. So I want you to consider making the investment. It starts October 12th. There are three calls a month. First call is for agents only, not for assistants, because I do not talk about pay or challenges with the assistants. I give them the systems. And I don't want you on the call if you have an assistant because they're not going to be as open to me as they should be or want to be. This call is for agents only. Also, meaning if you don't have an assistant, you are one. A lot, of, I've got 20 to 30% of the call is just agents only. Of course, all the calls there. Two calls per month for the assistant. One call for the agent, two calls for the assistant. Okay, is there one-on-one -on -one coaching provided for this? Not during that call, but after, the, after you put those systems into place, yes, of course. And so what I want you to hear is that it is 199, we should have it on there. It's $199 a month, okay? It's a six month course and you receive a 450 page policy and procedures manual. So Stephanie, we need to add that to the slide. So you're gonna receive a 450 page policy and procedures manual. Every single week, you get at least 30 to 50 pages. Duplicatable, scalable systems. You'll get an amazing just listed letter that the seller sends out, you write it, of course, you send it out, but it looks like it's from the seller to the neighbors. And it's really great, really good. So you're gonna get about 50 letters. You get 75 checklists. You get every single thing that I have put together over 44 years of assistant training. No one's, I've dug the well on this. Plus I've coached some of the very, very, very top agents in the country. I've either borrowed it from them and made it better or I helped them build it. So you're gonna get all those systems to take you out of the curve. Okay, so playbooks is the, the operative word. What are the systems playbooks that you do not have? What do you need tweaked up? Make that investment. I've never given money back in this course. I've been doing this course for, I don't know, I get over 25 years now, since 1990 I, or 89, I guess 80s, whatever. It's been a long time. And I want you to hear this from the bottom of my heart. This is my one thing. This is my one thing. This is what I know the best. I coach to this all the time. I coach top agents currently still. I coach coaches on how to train this. This is a great program for putting the foundational pieces in. The hiring process I go through is complementary to the CV career visioning process. It will get you the right assistant. It will, and I also teach you who's your next hire, who's your next hire, who's your next hire, following the models of KW. So. Put your questions in the chat box or come off mute. I'm happy to you know, raise your hand, whatever. Happy to take a vote, answer any questions real quick for anyone. Okay, don't see any questions. I have, a question. I have a question for you, Monica. Um, someone wants to know, how do you recommend tracking the return on investment with your client events? Oh, that's a simple one. Watch this. Don't spend a dime on your client your client events. You get your affiliates. Now, I know RESPA better than anyone, okay? I had my hands slapped around a few times. I get it. Vendors can pay for marketing. Vendors can pay for lead generation. So, they, so let's say that you have an event at one of the restaurants or something, or, you know, whatever these places are where you can go play games or something. You have your vendors support that by saying, May I ask you a favor? You know, I have a goal to do 50 transactions this year and we've gotten out of that, we're at number 27 or whatever it happens to be. So you remind them the business you gave them. And I'd like you to be my first, you know, call, you know, as a lender, would you be willing to contribute to this party? Now they have, con they have dollars for this, everybody. And would you mind sending the, you know, your credit card, your money to this event May I ask you to contribute $500? Let's say the event's going to cost you $2,000. Get four people to pay $500. So the ROI is tremendous if you do what I'm going to ask you to do. In every client event, you have, you know, if you've got a big event, you have a couple hundred people coming or 50 people coming, you have four or five clipboards, whatever you have to have. And on there, you say, please sign in. 
right? You have them sign. You know who they are. It doesn't matter. Make them sign in. And you say at the bottom of this, by the way, and this is what I teach in my class. Do you know anyone thinking about buying or selling? I have a table over here for an Amazon gift card, $15 gift card, you know, you say, or I have a really nice bottle of wine for you. Can you give me one referral? True story, coach them to this day. One gal in Florida, one gal in Alaska. They each have over 300 people come to their events, like the pie event or any event that they're having. And they sign in and they notoriously get 20%. So they average at least 60 referrals. Out of those 60 referrals, they are getting at least 10% are going to do something immediately. They have a 30% get added to the database and weren't quite ready just yet. They weren't quite ready just yet. So I want you to hear that. You have them sign in. Who do you know right now is thinking about buying or selling? We'd love to give you a gift card. We'd love to give you a bottle of wine. Now, a lot of people have done that, gave them, a, give, give a bottle of a whipped cream with a pie or something crazy. But if they're doing a shredding party, party where come take your picture with Santa Claus, have them sign in and have them give you a referral for that extra. So my client appreciation parties cost me zero. The return was phenomenal. So these gals are getting immediate business of six right away. Average commission is $10,000. That's $60,000. It comes right away in the vendors. Have a goal. And I'm coaching you to this. And I coach the assistants to this. And I coach you to this. I have the scripts for the vendors. So when you have a client appreciation playbook, which is part of the, you know, your client for life, you have a system for asking the vendors to participate. They can participate. They don't give you money. They don't give you any cash. You don't do any of that. It goes strictly. Can you bring the wine? Can you bring the name tags? Can you bring this? Can you bring that? You have no cost is your goal. No cost. Okay. Next question, Stephanie. That's the last question I see, Monica. Maybe somebody would like to put a hand up if they have one. What's that, Stephanie? You're, you're garbled. Oh, sorry. I don't see another question right here directly. Okay, well, let me answer one because someone asked, you know, the 72 touch, those are touches that you put into place. Obviously, command has the touch system, correct? And so you're going to add to that. Juan, has, Juan Bustamante. Hey, Juan, what's your question? Come off mute. Bottom left there. Got a microphone bottom left. Bottom left of your screen, all the way to the bottom. Okay, want to put it in the chat box, Juan, if you can't get off mute. Okay, so um, knowing your playbook comes out weekly, what if you need the client appreciation playbook earlier than it is scheduled? Okay, <laughs> all right. So if you need it, if you join my class and you need it earlier, I will give you the whole system for that. And it starts six months in advance. And sometimes you don't need the six months. But so, for example, I'm already talking to some of the people that I coach right now that they're going to do a May shredding party. And so by December, they're getting the shredding truck organized. They're getting the vendors to agree to it. Pay for that shredding truck costs $350. One vendor's paying for that. All the other affiliates are bringing the treats and the, the things like that. They're going to do a face painting and stuff like that. Okay, the calls are at 2 o'clock central. And the calls are live. I'm the person on the call. And the calls are also recorded. And it's a six-month class. You get over 450 pages of playbooks and policy and procedures. At the end of the class, you have two months, two months, to listen to all the calls and get all of the information again. So we do a, a great job of making sure you have everything you need. Okay, Juan, I couldn't get your question yet. You've got your hand up. Let's see. As an individual agent with no assistant, you're the perfect person to take this class. You need these systems. And during this process, I will teach you how to hire the right assistant so you don't make a mistake. And so there's a lot of agents who say, 
I don't have an assistant, but I want the systems. And like I said, I've got 25 to sometimes 40% are single agents wanting to start to put some playbooks together. They want the duplicatable and scalable. They don't want to think about, well, how do I do this? And what's this checklist? And what about a letter for this? And how do I do probates? And what would I do about this? And so I will give you all the number tracking systems. I give you everything I, I've talked to you about today. Okay. Any other question in there, Stephanie? No, I think the rest of the questions would be good for MAPS if you want to know about one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching yeah, or so one -on -one registration. Coaching, just, yeah. Stephanie, hold on. Thank you. If you want one-on-one -on -one coaching, email me at monica at kw.com and I will respond to your questions. So monica at kw.com. Okay. I can definitely handle that. We've got several great programs for that. Okay, anything else there, Steph? I'm trying to look here myself real quick. Okay, so let me finish this up. Do you get a discount to pay up front? There is a discount code at Web100. And Graham, can you come off mute? That's the discount we're offering, correct? But I believe. Was there a discount for paying up front? There's not one for up front. That's the one we have for, uh, for, your, okay. for your program, yeah. Okay, good. So everyone... Here's what I want you to hear from me. I've been doing this a long time and it's all about the system and it's all about de delegating and leveraging. And yet as a great salesperson, you weren't taught to be a great boss. So if you're the agent on this call, this calls for you. And I absolutely encourage you to make it mandatory. It's the first week of every month normally, except for October, we're starting a little late, but it's the first week of the month. And it's at two to three o'clock every single month is the first call is for you. The second and third call of the month is for your assistance. This is how you build duplicatable and scalable business. This is how you create customers for life. I make your life really easy. You do not have to build these systems. You'll build a reference manual. You may not be ready for probate. You may not be ready for XYZ. And yet you're going to have a reference manual and go, hey, let's pull that out. Hey, let's do that. And you'll have at least eight months to listen to these calls. The class is six months, three calls per month, 18 calls. So sign up. I'd love to have you in the calls. All right, everyone. If you have any questions further, it's monicakw.com. Happy to talk to you. Happy to help you. And I appreciate you. This is my one thing. And I know I can help build your business so that you can absolutely double what you're doing efficiently, easily, and magically. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week. Thanks, Graham. Thanks, Steph. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.